when I set out to make this channel uh, over 10 years ago, I knew that some of my most contentious videos or potentially risking um, contention would be videos about other countries and about things going on in other countries. Um, I always knew that there'd be a possibility that nationalists would jump on it and attack me. Um, but I also take the view that important things need to be spoken about. And if it offends nationalistic sensitivities, that's a risk I'll take. Um, I'm in my own country, so I could say what I want in my own country. Um, people are welcome to disagree with me, but um, this is freedom of speech. And in fact, what I'm going to talk about is around the issue of freedom of speech. Um, I'm going to be quoting Radio Free Asia in a minute. Um, I don't often talk about Vietnam. I I get a good impression from Vietnam. I think it's a beautiful country, obviously, with a difficult history. Um, I've known quite a, new, a few Vietnamese people, and overall, my impression is a good one. I find them amicable, and um, I've had a mainly good experience. Um, although one thing I have noticed is that um, often Vietnamese people are very quick to say we're a socialist country, not a communist country. Well, there is a freedom of speech problem in Vietnam, and any honest person will concede that, and I think this case highlights it. Um, you know, the problem with talking about human rights, especially regarding other countries, is people tend to view it as, oh, who's this Western guy? He's interfering in our internal affairs, or he's misunderstood or something like that. Um, I don't have much time for that sort of mindset. You know, I often criticise my own country, um, things going on in my own country. And as far as I'm concerned, um, the internet, short of making threats, um, should be a domain for free speech. Short of making threats, short of espionage, short of um, hurting children and so on. But I think, yeah, there has to be free speech. So without further ado, I'm just going to read out from this article from Radio Free Asia. Um, incidentally, there's a big trial going on in Vietnam at the moment um, over a businesswoman. It involves billions. It's a uh, alleged corruption trial. Um, I haven't followed it closely. I've just come across it tonight, in fact. Um, but that's not what this is about. I'll just briefly reference that, just, just for reference. Um it's involving the business woman, uh, Trong Mai Lam. Now, a quick word on this just before I continue. Any mispronunciation of names I take full responsibility for. I have looked at um, some how to pronounce videos um, with Vietnamese names, so apologies if I do pronounce anything wrong. It's, it's non-intentional. Um, but anyway, that, that's a big story in Vietnam at the moment, her trial. And she may be facing the death penalty, um, but we're talking billions. It's like a massive scandal. Um, but what I want to talk about is a less known case. Um, without further ado, this is the article from Radio Free Asia. Let me just say I trust Radio Free Asia more than I trust the Vietnamese government or any communist government for that matter, whether they call themselves socialists or not. Um, this report is translated, I'll just say this first, uh, by Anna Fu for RFA Vietnamese, and it's edited by Roseanne uh, Guerin and Malcolm Foster. Vietnamese authorities on Thursday arrested and charged two Facebook bloggers for abusing democratic freedoms, this is the irony of what they're charged with, to infringe the interests of the state for posting comments about the handling of a case of a death row inmate, Vietnamese media reported. The Security Investigation Agency of the Bindong Provincial Police charged um, Wen Duc Du, hope I'm pronouncing that right, and Huong Quoc Viet under Article 331 of Vietnam's Penal Code, saying their social media posts about death row inmate Ho Du Hai being unjustly sentenced had insulted judiciary agencies. The cases bring to five the number of people who have been prosecuted under Article 331, a law that rights groups say authorities regularly use to suppress dissent or criticism of the government. 
Authorities arrested and temporarily detained Du, 48, while they banned Viet, 46, from leaving his residential area. Both live in Bain Dong province in southern Vietnam. The Public Security Ministry People's Public Security Newspaper reported the police said Du and Viet published many social media posts with content that distorted, slandered and defamed agencies and individuals without specifying the contents of their posts. The prosecution of the two bloggers also illustrates the lengths that authorities will go to to silence critics for comments they made or uh, social media posts they wrote in the past. Um, Wen Van Dai, who used to work as a lawyer in Hanoi for many years, said social media platforms have been full of information defending and demanding justice for Ho Du Hai since 2008. In other words, why are these guys being picked on? Hai was arrested in March 2008 and convicted nine months later of robbery and the murder of two postal employees in Long An province. He was sentenced to five years in prison for the theft and given the death penalty for the murders despite a lack of of crucial evidence and the regularities on how the case was handled. In 2020, the Supreme People's Court rejected a request by the Supreme People's uh, Procuracy to reinvestigate the case, prompting High's family members to petition lawmakers over his death sentence. That petition has not been addressed and High, now 39, is still on death row. The prosecution of Du and Viet is a crackdown of freedom of speech and was carried out to serve the political purposes of several officials in the judiciary system, Dai said. The arrest and detention of the two individuals who posted information concerning the Ho Du Hai case on social media is nothing more than suppression, as the information they posted has been available for a long time, Dai said. Numerous democratic countries and human rights groups have called on Hanoi to repel or amend Article 331, along with Article 117, arguing that they are abused to stifle dissent. In Thailand, it's Article 112 that's often been accused of uh, being used in that way. Um, so what, what I find interesting is what they're charged with, abusing democratic freedoms to infringe the interests of the state. To me, that's kind of a manipulative way that the single-party regime of Vietnam is trying to suggest these men are have democratic freedoms and they're abusing that. Now, here's the thing. If they are knowingly telling falsehoods about the case that are proven to be falsehoods, then yes, that will come under what in this country we would call um, perverting the course of justice or something to that effect. Um, I accept that every country has a different um, legal system, but do I trust a single party state to be fair? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I think unquestionably it is highly plausible that these men are being persecuted simply because they have criticised the process. Now, as for, for the man that they're talking about, if there are serious questions over his case, why has the uh, judicial system not looked at that? You know, why are they not looking at the lack of evidence? Bear in mind, he's on death row. That's a very serious matter. It's um, a human rights issue. I'm not talking here about the rights and the wrongs of the death penalty. I'm talking about question marks on that case. Now, I'm not familiar with the case, so I can't comment on it in detail. Um, but it's a disgrace that these men could be potentially going to jail for, um, I'm not sure if it says the length of time they could be facing, but no one should be jailed for discussing um, matters of democracy, such as due process. That's a disgrace. Um in most countries, you would face some sort of legal consequences for slander or for telling lies about legal process. But in this case, the information has been available for a long time on the case. So why is it these guys are being prosecuted? Um, I definitely think that there's question marks around it. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a foreigner, so, you know, I don't expect this to change many opinions but I'm just putting it out there I think it's important um, to any Vietnamese viewers you know you're welcome to disagree with me you may know more about the case than I do all I will say is if you think I'm going to be silenced by kind of nationalistic sensitivities I just don't take that approach on my channel um, I have a right to talk about anything I want basically um, what I'm doing here is quoting a report by Radio Free Asia um, which is a 
in the institution I have a lot of respect for. And like I said, I trust him a lot more than the Vietnamese government. Um, so yeah, Vietnam does have a freedom of speech problem and it does have a human rights problem. And the problem with the system of a single party state is the mechanisms are not there to challenge it because everyone has to answer to the single party state in question. Um, it's just, I mean, to say that these men are abusing their democratic freedoms, they're the what freedoms, if they are not being allowed a voice to discuss serious questions over due process in a death penalty case, then where is their freedom of speech? So it's not a case of abusing democratic freedoms. Their freedoms are being taken away. Um, that's how I see it. And if anyone could prove otherwise, I'll be interested to hear that.